Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we will learn about correlation and regression. And look at this, correlation is actually the degree and direction of the relationship. And for samples, we denote the correlation coefficient by R X Y. And it gives us how much X is connected with Y or Y is connected with X. And when you calculate this, you will always get an answer between minus 1 and 1. Actually, we are finding the cosine of the angle between two vectors. Uh, let's say X and Y. The formula is all about cos theta. So we are actually finding the cosine of the angle between X and Y. And if the angle between them is 0 degree, that means it's kind of like this. Um, and we get cos 0 is equal to 1. And that is why it becomes 1. And remember, when you get 1, it means perfect positive correlation. And when you get 0, it means uh, there is no correlation. And when it is minus 1, the angle between the vectors will be 180 degrees. And that means perfect negative correlation. And whenever you get an answer very near to 1, we write strong correlation, strong positive. And positive correlation means uh, two things growing together or falling together, means moving in the same direction. And negative correlation means one parameter grows and the other parameter will be moving in the exact opposite direction. Uh, for example, uh, two adjacent shops. If they are selling the same commodities, if the and if the sales in one shop is extremely high, then of course it will the what do you call the sales in the other shop will be low because of and because they are selling the same commodities. And that means it is negatively correlated. And positive correlation means two things growing together. For example, if you are good in mathematics, you will find it helpful in many other subjects. So mathematics is positively correlated to physics. It does not mean that if you learn math, you will get marks in physics. But it means there is a connection between the subject mathematics and physics. And so correlation is called the degree and direction of the relation. And if you square correlation coefficient, we get coefficient of determination. And it shows how much influence one variable has on the other. Now let's do one problem and understand this correlation and regression. So I have a data which connects page size and load time of some famous websites. So these are the page size and the loading time. Okay. So I'm calling the page size to be X and load time to be Y. Now you do one thing, use a calculator, take a calculator and find X bar, Y bar, Sigma X, Sigma Y, all these things. If you're feeling lazy to use the calculator, uh, calculate uh, just as you calculated long back. Anyway, find all these values. Okay, now correlation is given by n sigma xy minus sigma x sigma y, the whole divided by this. Now you plug in all these values. And I calculated it, I got 0.548. Now look at this, I told you, you'll always get an answer between minus 1 and 1. So the first thing I observe is, it is positive. Positive means there is a connection between the page size and the loading time. But it is not one. So it is not perfect. One means uh, loading time is completely controlled by the page size. So there is not 100% control over the page size, but there is a positive influence on the page size. So look at this, we get the degree and direction. So it is the extent, the extent of relation is 0.542 and it is positive. Now, the second thing we are going to calculate is the regression. 
Now look at this. The regression is actually the relation between, the linear relation between x and y. Um, now look at this. When you collect data, practically when you collect data, and if you plot it, it might look like this. You might be expecting it will be a straight line, but it won't be a line. But it might scatter around a line, and this is called the scatter diagram. And if the correlation is very near to 1, it will almost look like a line. And if it is equal to 1, it will be a line. If it is equal to minus 1 also, it will be a line. And when it comes near to 0, it won't, it will be like what you call completely scattered here and there. Okay, now we have pretty decent correlation. So, what we do is, we just, um, what you call, convert this into an approximate line. Look at this. Let's, let's take a look at this data. So, this line will be our regression line. And this line is created by using two different logic. One is, you minimize the distance measured parallel to y-axis. Or you can minimize the distance measured parallel to the x-axis. So we have two regression lines. Anyway, um, here the required regression line is, so this is a direct method. You just by heart this formula. Uh, y cap minus y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bar. And you have all these things. So plug in all these values and you will get b y x. And you already know x bar and y bar. So substitute and simplify. That's it. So this is the line of y on x. Now look at this. A line on y of x must be written in this format. The reason is we are trying to predict y. We are trying to predict the load time. And the page size will be given. So x is given. And we are trying to predict y. So the predictor variable will be on this side. And the input variable will be on the uh, right side. That's the independent variable will be on the right side. And one more thing. Uh, we have a habit of writing y cap. This is to signify uh, these are created values, not the exact values. Because I told you, if you plot the data, it will be scattered. It will be scattered here and there. And what you did is, you created a line in such a way that all the points are kind of like nearby. So remember, whatever you predict using this equation will not be exact. And that is why we put y cap. And I have one more method that will be more easier. Okay, so this is called normal equation method. So what we do here is we assume the line to be y equal to a plus bx. Because I want to predict y, so I assume the line is y equal to a plus bx. Now I take summation on both sides, so I get sigma y equal to sigma a plus bx. Because my aim is to create two equations. I want the values of a and b, and if I want the values of a and b, I want two equations, two linear equations. So the first thing I do is I'll take sigma on both sides. And that means I get sigma y equal to sigma a plus sigma b into x. Now look at this. Sigma a means uh, you are given the data a, 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 again and again and again and again, generally n times. Okay, I'll ask you one question. If you have the data 10, 10, 10, 10, 4 times, what will be the sum of all this? 4 into 10. If you have 10 5 times, 5 into 10. Likewise, the sigma a will become n into a. And this b will come outside. That's the property of summation. b sigma x. So, you have to by heart this equation. Okay. So, that's the first equation. So once more, I'll tell you. Here, what we do is we assume the equation to be y equal to a plus bx. And then what do we do? We take sigma on both sides. So we get sigma y equal to sigma of a plus bx. Now using the properties of sigma, what happens is we end up with sigma y equal to, uh, what is sigma a? I told you just now, n into a. Plus what is sigma bx? It will be b sigma x. So that is equation number 2.
you have to be you have to by heart this or you can derive it every time now the second thing we need two equations we need how many equations yeah two equations the second thing to do is you multiply throughout by the independent variable you multiply throughout by the independent variable that is x into y equal to a into x plus b into x square and then you take summation on both sides you take sigma on both sides so you end up with something like this that is sigma x into y equal to a sigma x plus b sigma x square so we have two equations now just plug in all the values because you know sigma y you know sigma x all this stuff just plug in these values and use the calculator look at this the equations look like this so use your calculator and solve i'll repeat use your calculator and solve that's it that's called normal equation method okay so that's a short video on how to do correlation and regression in the next video uh, we will do one or two more problems based on correlation and regression from your past years question paper so till then my friends bye